In this video, I'm going to show an example of how to compute power using R. We're going to test a hypothesis that the mean is 6 at the 5% level. We did some pilot study, and we found that the sample variance of that pilot study was 16. And we want to know, well, what is the power for, for a sample size of 64? We're going to think of the alternative hypothesis of well, what if the mean is 6.5? We'll need an intermediate calculation, and that intermediate calculation is we need the standard error of the mean, and that's just the square root of the sample variance divided by the sample size. So there's our, um, there are the parameters of the problem, and we're just doing sort of a simple hypothesis test. We're going to go and talk about, well, what is statistical power? So what I'm doing here is I'm putting the uh, upper and lower percentiles into a vector called cuts. Next, I'm going to put this to work by basically asking R to give me critical values on the ordinary on the scale of our mean. So we're going to go look at a normal with a mean of, of the null hypothesized mean and a standard deviation of the standard error. So this is going to give us uh, critical values based off of the sampling distribution of x bar and we're going to basically ask for the 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 quantile 1 minus alpha over 2 that's going to be 97.5 percentile and the quantile from uh, alpha over 2 so 0 0.025 or the two and a half percentile so we'll get some critical values if we're below the lower one and or above the upper one we're going to reject so using my shade norm command, if we're outside of that vector of critical values, uh, we're going to reject. And so if you want to have a picture of this hypothesis test, you can see that we'll reject in this region here if we get our mean that's below around 5. And we'll reject if we're above something like 7. So you might ask yourself, well, what if instead we said the mean was 6.5 in reality. It's not really 6. How frequently would we reject under the same variance of, of, the, of this estimate? So the way we can do this to actually plot this, use the shade norm command and use the lines equal true to put, uh, to put, this, uh, to put this plot on top of the one that we already have. We'll still, we're still asking, well, what's the probability that we'll reject? But we'll, uh, we'll plot, we'll shade the, this probability uh, in blue in this case. So you can see that if we center this density function at 6.5 instead of 6, but keep the same critical values, we're more likely to reject in this upper tail, less likely to reject in this lower tail, and it looks like more likely to reject overall. Now, the probability that we reject under the alternative hypothesis is called the power. So this blue shaded region is a probability that we'll reject under this alternative hypothesis. That's, that's the power. There was nothing really special about this alternative hypothesis. We could have computed power for any one of these, any one of these values uh, of that were possible for the alternative hypothesis, but we just computed it for 6.5. For example, we could have computed it for 7, 8, 9, 10, if we wanted to, and we could get a, a value for the power for each of those, uh, each of those calculations. Uh, when someone wants to know, well, what, what does the power of my test look like? What they really want is to know is they want to know, well, how does how does the probability I reject depend on how far away from the null hypothesis I am? In particular, they want, to, they want that probability that they reject to be sufficiently high for a small enough deviation, for a deviation from the null hypothesis that they care about. But you can see that this power isn't so hard to compute, so maybe we could uh, we could sort of automate this and get a function that will actually compute this. And so I actually took the liberty of writing a function that will compute power. Um, and then we can use this to actually plot the power function for uh, certain sample sizes. So what my function does 
is it takes a vector of values at which I want to compute power. This is the mean under the null hypothesis. It takes a variance, and that's the variance from your pilot study, of uh, your estimated variance of this population you want to study. It takes the sample size, and if you want to, you can specify uh, a significance level other than 0.05, but setting equal 0.05 in the function statement gives it a default of 0.05, so you don't need to specify that. So the first part that we'll do is we'll compute the critical values, the lower critical value and the upper critical value. We did that using Q norm, so that gives us normal critical values. Then what we'll do is we'll use the, uh, the P norm command to compute the probability we reject when, it's, when, the, when we're in the upper tail. So this P, PR high corresponds to, the, to this region right here. It's the actual number that corresponds to that. And this PR low, using the P norm command as well, corresponds to this little sliver here. That uh, it, it might be a big sliver if we assume the, uh, a theta value of 5.5, but for something like 6.5, it's a little sliver. So we compute both of these rejection region probabilities, and then we add them up, and we call that the power. So that's simple, straightforward enough. So we can just go ahead and run that code there. And that gives us a function called power. So if we want the uh, power for uh, for 6.5, we want to know, well, what's the probability I reject if the truth is 6.5? Null hypothesized value was 6. The variance was 16. And the sample size was 64. And I want to know, well, what was the power of that? I can ask myself, and that's actually going to tell us exactly what the power is. It's going to be a probability of 0 0.170. That's the probability we would reject if the truth really was 6.5. So compare that to, say, for example, well, what's the probability I reject if the truth really was 7, but I'm testing a null hypothesis that the mean is 6. It's much higher. It's 0.51 instead of 0.17. Uh, and so you're going to, as, as you get farther away from the null hypothesis, you're going to get larger and larger values. Just to show you on a small scale, I could actually ask for these both at the same time. It's going to compute both of them at the same time. So theta or theta can be a vector, or it can be, uh, uh, it can be a, a scalar. It doesn't matter. It's just going to compute this for it's going to perform the same action on each element of this vector and so uh, for example maybe I'll define theta to be the sequence of numbers from 3 up to 9 uh, in 0 0.01 increments I can uh, use this power function and then store the resulting vector into an object called pow so let's run this line and so now I have an object called pow and I have, it's the same length as theta, uh, and this gives me the power for each value of theta. So maybe I want to see what this, what this looks like. So I'll, I will plot theta versus pow, use type equals L, and I want to actually make sure the scale is from 0 to 1 on the Y scale. So that's using the Y lim command, and I'll put a label on it, call it my power plot. So there you have a power plot. It shows you how the power depends on the value of our, our alternative hypothesis. If our alternative hypothesis is 3, we're almost surely going to reject if that's the truth. If the, uh, if the alternative hypothesis was 6, well, that's the same as the null hypothesis, so we should be able to reject that at, uh, at only 5% of the time because that's how we set up our null hypothesis. So show you this let's just plot a horizontal line using the ab line command and in fact this power function actually minimizes right there at 0.05 so what happens if we get a larger sample size to power well let's go ahead and define n2 then we can get a vector uh, of power uh, computed power values using that power function we already defined and just instead of m1 we use n2 and we can plot this on top of the same object using uh, the lines command. 
and I'm going to use the option LTY equals dashed to plot a dashed line and I'm going to make the color blue so we can make really see the difference between these two. So you can see that as we increase the sample size at any given sort of deviation from the or en for any given alternative hypothesis we're going to be more likely to reject the null hypothesis. The, as we get larger sample sizes we use the same estimator we test the same null hypothesis our power of that test should increase if you go and gr gather more data uh, it should be useful and this is the sense in which it is useful is that we're able to distinguish alternative more alternative hypotheses from the null hypothesis so we weren't able to distinguish a, a deviation from this null hypothesis of six of one but maybe that's important to us if we used a sample size of 64 which was this black line our power would have been something like 0.5 but if we use a sample size of 256 our power is much greater in fact it's almost one and so we're uh, much more confident in our conclusion when we fail to reject the null hypothesis that that it wasn't the our test to blame our test was actually uh, a good enough test and it would have detected a difference if that difference really were that large so Understanding power and understanding uh, the determinants of power uh, is, is a, nice, uh, a nice thing to have in your, your repertoire when you're thinking about uh, working with data and when you're thinking about applying statistics. So hopefully this was a nice introduction to power, uh, also a nice application of how to, how to write a function in R and how to do some informative plots.